So I'll hear people say, if you believe it, then you can achieve it. And the problem with that is they're leaving out the most important part of the equation. And that part is work, action, actually doing something. That's what you have to do to achieve anything. Yeah, you got to believe it, but you better get the work done. And most people will not be successful. They will not reach whatever they wrote because when there's not anything emotionally attached to it, they're going to quit and give up. Most people were closer than they ever thought they were to finishing that big thing, but they never finished it because they didn't feel like finishing it. Or they were doing it and it was pain. And most people quit in the pain because the pain hurts so bad that they don't know if they want to keep going to get to go. Because you're going to wake up most days and not feel like it. You're going to wake up most days and not be pumped up. You're going to wake up most days and not feel like doing it. But when you can get to a point that you do it anyway, then there's no way you won't reach any of your goals. There's things that you know you're supposed to do as a human being. Things that you know are going to improve your life. Do those things. There's things that you know are going to make you a worse person and make your life worse. Don't do those things. Get up early. Do some kind of workout. Eat good foods. Clean your room. Make a list of things that you're supposed to do in your life. And then wake up in the morning and do those things. And no, it is not easy. You're not going to get it from anyone else but you. You think things are going to just go your way? Well, they're not going to just go your way. You got to make them go your way. You think things are going to just happen for you? Well, they're not just going to happen for you. You got to make them happen. Everyone seems to think that this world, this government, somebody owes them something. Nobody owes you shit. If you want something, go out there and get it. Go out there and take it. That's all there is to it. You need to stop this whining, this crying all the damn time, and get up and do something about it. And the biggest thing I see getting in the way is your f***ing feelings. Your feelings. Where there's a will, there's a way. When you've got air in your lungs, then you have no excuse. It's just a matter of perspective. You're either going to be a f***ing sheep, or you're going to be a lion. You're going to be an attacker and a go-getter. But if you want to sit there and cry, bitch, and moan and whine all the f***ing time, well, you can't, 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 then you sit your ass on that bench with the losers, and you stay there. But don't expect me to turn around and pat you on the back and say, hey, good job for being a f***ing quitter. Get up and do something about it. People who win can do sh and people who lose talk sh You can win if you choose to learn the things that you need to do and then can do them. That's reality. That's the sh nobody wants to admit because admitting so means that you have to take responsibility for where you are currently. And you have to say, I am where I am currently because I didn't do X, Y, and Z. And guess what? That can hurts a little bit. But once you accept that truth, you are able to then move forward with the actions required to get you to where you want to go. Discipline your body. Free your mind. Get up early and go. Get after it and you will become the person you want to be. And you become that person through one small decision at a time. Life responds to deserve, not need. Life was not designed to give us what we need. Life was designed to give us what we deserve. Once you understand that little life principle in your own self-interest, I'm telling you, it's life-changing. The ancient law does not go like this. If you need, you will reap. No, it doesn't work that way. A lot of people out there are hoping it works that way. But no, it doesn't. The ancient law goes like this. If you plant, you will reap. If you sow, you will reap. Somebody says, well, I really need to reap. Well, then you really need to plant in your own self-interest. Your own self-interest needs to be educated in how to plant, how to do it so everybody wins, because life doesn't respond to need. You can't go to the soil and say, I need a crop. The soil just smiles at you. And here's what the soil says. Don't bring me your need. Bring me some seed. Bring me some effort. Bring me some discipline. Bring me some interest. Bring me some service. Bring me these things and I'll return to you multiplied by two times, five times, ten times. You can't come with need. You've got to come with seed. You've got to come with willingness. You've got to come with skills. 
You've got to be willing to learn, willing to change, willing to grow, willing to put yourself out, willing to stand up to the bad weather, willing to pull out the weeds, willing to nurture. That's the only way you get a return. Once you understand these principles, self-interest now truly becomes an exciting challenge. Making sure everybody wins. Now here's another one. If you want to find, you must search. And if you search, you will find. In order to find, you must search. You must go to the seminar. You must go to the library. You've got to go to the bookstore. You've got to go to the class. You've got to go searching. Why? If you search, you will find. You'll find ideas. You'll find inspiration. You'll find hope. You'll find contacts, but you've got to be out there on the search, on the look. Life reserves its treasures for those who deserve it, not those who need it. Enlightened self-interest, giving so that you will receive, searching so that you will find, making sure that everybody wins all the way around. Enlightened self-interest needs to be educated. Enlightened self-interest says, I will learn that life is not just the passing of time. I will learn that life is the collection of experiences, ups and downs, highs and lows, laughter and tears. You must decide to act. You must have the discipline to act. Now here's what's important about discipline. One discipline affects another discipline. All disciplines affect each other. In fact, here's a good philosophical phrase. Everything affects everything else. Nothing stands alone. Don't be naive and say this doesn't matter. Of course it matters. It all matters. Some things may matter more than others, but everything matters. If you'd rather sleep in than go for a walk around the neighborhood, pretty soon it will matter. If you'd rather spend your money instead of saving it, Pretty soon it will matter. If you'd rather work late every night instead of going home and spending time with your family, pretty soon it will matter. It all matters. Every letdown affects the rest. If you won't walk around the block, you probably won't eat right. And you probably won't buy the books. And you probably won't attend the seminar. And you probably won't spend your money wisely. And after years of this, it all adds up. So the key to reversing this process is to start picking up the disciplines. It does matter. It all matters. Now, here's the positive side. Every new discipline affects the rest. Every new discipline makes a difference. That's why action is so important. The smallest action, the least action, the action that you won't think will matter, it all matters. Take it. Because when you start accomplishing and the value starts to return, you'll find inspiration to do the next one and the next one and the next one. If you start walking around the block, it'll inspire you to start eating right. You start eating right, it'll inspire you to get a book. You get a book and it'll inspire you to get a journal. You get a journal and it'll inspire you to develop some skills. Disciplines affect each other. Lack affects the rest of your life. The key is to diminish the lack. One of our greatest temptations is to just ease up a bit. To do just a little bit less than you're capable of. To take a little break. Somebody says, it'll just affect my sales. No, it'll affect your consciousness. It'll affect your philosophy. It'll affect your home life. It'll affect everything. No, you can't ease up a bit. That's what vacations are for. When you're at work, work. When you're on vacation, rest. Wherever you are, be there. If you think about vacation when you're at work, you'll surely think about work when you're on vacation. You'll just mess it all up. So be disciplined. Get involved. Do all that it takes to get the job done. Get your health back. Get your bank account where it's supposed to be. Get your family in order. 
Get disciplined, be disciplined every day. When you set up the disciplines that give your life structure, miracles can happen. Multiply. And I'm telling you, anybody who wants to make a drastic change in their income can do it. I was broke at age 25 and a millionaire at age 31. Everything around me was the same. I changed. I refined my philosophy. I read the books. I took the classes. Started looking at life a little differently. I'm telling you, it worked. There's no secret to success. There's a system to success. The system works if you work it. If you don't work it, it won't work. But it works if you work it. And that's one four-letter word that most people don't like. They're not willing to work. I have a friend who invited me to her brother's house to help him to get off drugs, to introduce him to a drug program that can help him. And, and I said, these people can help you, but you've got to be willing to do the work. And after we finish, he asked us to leave. And I'll never forget what she said. As we were going down the steps, she said, Les, I do apologize for wasting your time, but I realized when my brother knew that it would require work for him to get off drugs, that most people won't participate in their own rescue. And there are people who will be presented with an opportunity, who know that they could be laid off at any moment, who know that there's no such thing as job security, who know that them keeping their job has nothing to do with how good they are. And yet and still, they'll go to work and have knots in their stomachs, hoping when they open up an email that they have not been told, this is your last day. They'll go to work hoping there's not a security guard standing by their desk with a box and say, empty your things in here and take them to the front door and escort them to the park. They go in there hoping it doesn't happen. Why? Because they don't want to do it's an aversion to most people's spirit. And I'm walking around in the jungle and I said, well, Lord, I can't fly like the eagle. I can't run like the cheetah. I can't roar like the lion and I can't throw my weight around like the elephant. What did you give man as his defense in, in the whole ecosystem of human, of, of life force? What did you give me? He said, I gave you a brain. That's why God didn't make chairs. He only brings it halfway. We are taught that God makes furniture. I want you to look around your life for trees, not tables. God's going to bring it within the reach of your mind and your creativity is going to take it the, the rest of the way. Look at what all we were able to do. No other, no other creature, no other species has sent satellites up into the air, created smartphones. Look at what we did with our head. Why are we not using our head?